happy Monday, Pathlings. I'm Spin Pixie, and that's Aries. And this week on Planet Pathlings, we are going to be talking about color in magic. And Aries is probably going to join us for this video today because she just hopped up on the altar. Um, so we're going to be talking about color in magic and the many different ways that color is involved in our magical practice. So today I'm going to be talking to you about the color scheme and the altar and uh, why we have various different color schemes for our altars. So um, at the end of this video, um, actually I'm going to actually put the link to something that I did read prior to doing this video that I thought was really interesting. Um, and hoping you guys will definitely check it out because I think it has a lot of information as to color theory in magic and um, I, I think you guys will find it very interesting. Do not eat the clover! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> yes, my cat was just eating the clover in my dish. I, I think she likes to mess with the green man. I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and read from some of the notes that I've got here, and there are quite a bit, so I'm gonna try to get through these, and then I'll take you around the altar and I'll show you some of this stuff that is on my altar. So, um, as I said, I'm going to be talking to you about the color scheme of the altar and why that is important. And so, um, this is what I have here. Um, and at the end of this video, I'm going to um, put a link to in the description to this blog that I read. And it's really interesting. It has some interesting theories on um, color and how it's used in magic. And I think this would be something that you guys would be interested in reading. Um, okay, so... There are a lot of ways in which color is integrated in our magic. From the clothing that we wear during rituals, as in our ritual robes, um, to, to the tarot cards, the color and the symbolism in the tarot cards, our chakras, our auras, candle and elemental correspondences. Color plays a major role in our magical practice. One of the theories as for the psychological reason that color is so important is that color wields immense sway over the attitudes and emotions excuse me over our attitudes and emotions when our eyes take in color they communicate with a region in the brain known as the hypothalamus this in turn sends a cascade of signals through the to the pituitary gland on the endocrine system and then to the thyroid gland and the thyroid gland signals um, the hormones, signals different hormones, and these hormones, they cause fluctuations in mood, emotion, and behavior. This theory has been shown and proven to be fact in the things that we buy for our pleasure and enjoyment to the things that we use um, for food to nourish our bodies. Uh, generally, it takes about 90 seconds or so to formulate an opinion on something, and it is generally based on the colors that you see before you and the feelings or the emotions that they invoke. Um, a lot of this, a lot of reasons for this, is also why they have uh, red and yellow um, in a lot of restaurant colors and decorum, because red and yellow has been proven to make you hungry. So apart from the physical manifestations of color or the psychological manifestations of emotion, uh, energy, uh, color also exists in the various energy fields. Even though we cannot see energy with the naked eye, we can often feel or sense it. And these sensations often bring to mind colors. Energy has the ability to be manipulated, quantified, and if done correctly, some energy has the ability to be changed. Different energies have different energy fields that vary either drastically or ever so slightly in color. It just depends on the type of energy um, that you are feeling or seeing. Different energies trigger different colors. For, for example, um, an elemental energy might make you think, uh, an emotional energy, excuse me, might make you think of the color blue, uh, as blue tends to be the color of different emotions. And an angry or passionate love may make you think of the color red. For some reason, this happens to be a common occurrence for many people. Another example would be 
if I were to say to you, um, if I were to say to you, what color would you think of if I said the earth? Or what color would you think of if I said something about water or the ocean? More often than not, um, the answers that you guys would come back would be green for the earth and blue for water. And it is these commonalities um, that that begat the correspondences that we use for our uh, our color, our elements, or our candles, the things that we use for color. In many cases, the color signature of a deity, element, or energy is very common. Um, and it is this commonality that allows us to be triggered um, when we see these colors. So if I were to see, let's say, red, black, or white, I would think of my deity. Or if you, um, you know, you have different, you know, whatever your deity's color symbols are. Um, like if you have like a gold or a bronze and your deity is more Egyptian, you might think of um, your Egyptian deities. So aside from being just a focal point, the color scheme of our altars helps to tap into those energies of what we want to make manifest. Now that I've gone through my notes, I just want to go ahead and show you um, what I'm talking about here in, in practice. So here before you, you see my altar, and this is um, to the green man. And um, there are various things on this altar that when I see them, it automatically, within an instant, will trigger who this altar is for. So um, I have his little corn dolly here, which um, Aries, you saw in the video, has been nipping at. Um, and I get the sense that he just laughs and says that every animal needs a taste of the earth sometimes. But she does tend to nip at him a bit. <laughs> He was a lot nicer when I first finished him. I have a lot of terracotta. A lot of um, terracotta on this altar, too. And the dish, which is holding the clover. And I, I got some beautiful... I try to pick this um, fresh a lot of the time. And I'm not going to get very good light here. But um, I have some clover here that I pick... Um, after um, that I picked this morning after the rainfall we had a lot of rain so um, we got beautiful clover and um, this sits here and if I don't have clover then I'll have um, different types of leaves oak leaves evergreen leaves um, pomegranate leaves whatever um, and then his candle holders are green um, Oh, and this is my favorite part of the altar, which I don't know if I'm going to get a good picture of this because the light in here is ridiculous, but um, it's a caterpillar on a leaf, and I think this is perfect for this altar. I also have um, some natural rocks like lava rock and um, other various kinds of rocks that I found um, whilst going around my property. Um, just different things that I've gotten that are natural. I have some driftwood back here from the ocean. Um, just a lot of natural different things that are natural. Earth, natural water, natural fire, natural air. I have feathers back here. Um, and all of this, when I see it, it triggers in me who this altar represents. And uh, that is what an altar is supposed to do. Now, as I talked about earlier, um, the colors that we use, not only do they trigger, you know, your, 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 your eyes, but they trigger your mind, they, they trigger your senses. They work on, you know, color works on many senses of the body, you know, um, and, and triggers many different things, which taps you into that energy of, of what you're trying to, um, what you're trying to get done, what you're trying to do. If this were, um, a pro, um, an altar for love, you would never know it because, well, many people would never know it. I mean, for some people, correspondences can be different. It's really what matters is what gets you to that energy. So for some people, correspondences may be different. I've really never run into anyone who would figure green as being love. But um, let's say I did this altar and it was an altar for love or for romance. You would never know it by the colors. You would think that this was a you know, um, 
a prosperity at the very least, or an earth altar, um, you would not generally, wouldn't, I mean, there's nothing wrong with thinking that it's something completely different, but, you know, um, generally the reason that we use color in our practice is so that we can just instantly be triggered into that energy, into that feeling, that field of whatever it is that we're trying to make manifest. Now there can be different types of altars with many different color schemes. Whether you have an elemental altar, an altar for your deity, an altar for a sabbat or season. Um, altars often come with various different types of color schemes. The end result is just whatever gets you to the, um, the energy or puts you in a place of being ready to create that magic. Um, I do not often use colors. I do. I do not always use color schemes uh, when designing an altar. However, I do try to, um, with certain deities, with certain things that I work with, or with certain seasons, um, because I think that it is a very good trigger. Because if I'm working on something and I just happen to be walking across the room and I catch my altar out of the corner of my eye, immediately it's going to trigger. That's, you know, oh, the spell needs to be fed, or, oh, you know, it's the season for, you know, Imbolc, or it's the season for Yule, or it's the season of Samhain. Um, and it's going to capture those feelings within me in just an instant, just a, a small instant of looking at the colors. So, do you guys have a color scheme for your altar? Are there colors that trigger you for your deities that are uncommon, or anything for the season that you use that is not common? Um, or maybe there's a color scheme for your altar that you always use. I'd love to hear from you guys in the um, in the comment section. Also, don't forget we do have a Facebook group, so go ahead and join that and get active. We'd love to hear your thoughts on uh, suggestions for videos, if you have any questions, anything that you would like to um, connect with myself or any of the hosts about um, in regards to being new on your path. So until next time... Have a beautiful and blessed Imbolc, and I will see you next week. Thank you for watching, and many blessings. Bye-bye!